Instead, I learned how to be everybody's nobody. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode two of Vlogmas. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to embrace the real you or embracing your true self. But first, let me tell you my story. I grew up in a Christian home and besides my dad and I, everyone in our family was very extroverted and outgoing. Now all my siblings are grown up and I think they'd all say that they enjoy their alone time, but I do think that every single one of them would agree that I was the painfully shy and introverted one out of all of us. And at times, although I wouldn't necessarily say that I am all that shy anymore, I do suffer from social anxiety from time to time. Actually, I'm not gonna lie, it's quite a bit. And most of that comes from being painfully introverted. And culturally, if you live in America, then you'll understand we live in an extroverted culture where being extroverted is seen as open and successful and being introverted is seen as closed down, weak, unconfident, flaky. Even my own loving family unintentionally put those pressures on me. I even jokingly posted on my Instagram, don't be ashamed of who you are, that's your parents' job. With which my mother promptly responded, but what if we love you the way you are? With a little kissy emoji, love you mom. Anyway. I digress. So let's fast forward to college. So when I was in college, I was between the age of 16 and 20. So yeah, I was 16 when I started, that's a whole other story, but 16 to 20 is when I was in college. I went off to Nashville alone. And okay, so my anxiety had gotten really bad and I had fallen ill for about a year and I was in a really toxic, bad relationship. So. Because of those things, my anxiety was really flared up. So I decided to see a college campus counselor. And I'm not gonna lie, that first counselor that I saw was pretty bad. However, it was around that time on my own that I had an epiphany. You know that phrase, nobody's perfect? Well, that phrase always just bothered me growing up. You know, I would hear nobody's perfect, nobody's perfect. But I had the idea to turn the phrase around to everybody is imperfect. See, all my life I really struggled with perfectionism. And thankfully today I can say that flares up only really once in a while with certain triggers like losing something or breaking something. But it was really difficult for me up until my early 20s. Everything about my life had to be perfect. The phrase said nobody. So to me, that just meant challenge accepted. The area that my perfectionism really got to me was societal grouping. Is I don't I don't even know if that's a word. Clicks maybe. I never fit into a group. I wasn't a tomboy. I wasn't a girly girl. I wasn't super athletic. I wasn't a bookworm. Like I wasn't any of those things. Instead, I learned how to be everybody's nobody. I could almost fit into those groups if I just shifted a little here, a little there. And all of those versions of me had some truth to it. I was a little of all those things, but to fit in, I felt like I needed to be a lot of a few things. And this made me feel really stressed within myself. I truly felt like I could be a part of each of those groups if I just tugged a little harder on certain personality traits of mine to fit the mold. But no amount of tugging and pulling made me feel like I fit in. I characterized this attribute of mine contradiction. I grew up literally calling myself a contradiction. I wore boy clothes, but I loved makeup, contradiction. I loved guidelines, but hated being told what to do, contradiction. And that was mainly middle school and high school. As I was in college, that mentality worsened. I no longer considered myself just a contradiction, but even more, I felt socially frantic. I felt like if one day in class, I was the quiet shy one, then in front of those group of people, I had to always remain that version of myself. If I joined a Bible study and I was loud and extroverted that day, well, that set the tone for what I had to be within that group all the time. But the thing is, I'm human. I'd feel different ways every single day when I'd show up to class or, or be part of a Bible study or, or study group. But because I felt I owed it to my peers to keep a consistent version of myself, I forced myself to be a single part of me. Is this making any sense? I hope so. It wasn't until I was working with my next counselor that I told her all of this. She told me to stop calling myself a walking contradiction and not be ashamed of all my little passions. That I don't just have to be one thing. I don't have to be a diehard yogi 
to do yoga. I don't have to just listen to rock music because I liked a few certain bands. That variety is beautiful. And instead call myself dynamic. As I've grown, I've learned that being dynamic is pretty cool. But I still feel the pull to be one thing or another. One day I want to be the next Kim K, super bougie, have my makeup and hair done every day. And the next day I want to be a naked hippie painting in the sunlight. But I'm a little of both and a little of a lot of things at that. And that's okay. And that's not just okay, it's, it's great. Life certainly is not boring and I'm constantly learning myself. I'm forever on a journey, finding out what lights me up and what doesn't. And that's okay if it changes day to day. We are meant to grow with the seasons and every day we evolve, so why fight it? So how do we embrace our real self? Number one, recognize the lies you are telling yourself. I think debunking the lie when possible is key. I like to believe that the lie we tell ourselves is just totally opposite of the truth. A lie is a lie after all, isn't it? However, sometimes like my nobody is perfect to everybody is imperfect, sometimes it just takes rewording some things around to find the truth that may be in it. And in turn, we learn to love ourselves. Learning to love yourself and like yourself is a huge part in embracing the real you. I remember when I said in a really dark time in my life, that I honestly didn't like myself. But in the same breath, I would say, I just don't know who I am. And how can you not like something you don't know? Which brings me to my next point. Number two, be okay with trial and error. Figure out what lights you up and chase after that. Know that it's totally okay and normal for that to change as well. Just because XYZ brought you so much happiness last year doesn't mean that that's what brings you happiness in this season of your life. Number three, nothing is set in stone. Not your hobbies, your likes, your dislikes, your passions, your goals, your dreams, your morals, your beliefs. Don't fight the change you go through. I know personally, I am not the person that my 12 year old self thought that I was going to be. But I'm glad, I like this version way better. And who knows where I'll be in another 13 years. Don't fight the change. And don't let yourself feel guilty for not living up to the you you created in your head years ago. More likely than not, you're on your way to being a better and, and more alive person than the person that you intended on in the first place. Number four. Lastly, I'm going to point you to a video that's so wonderful and really opened up my eyes and my heart. It also set the building blocks of mine and Adam's relationship. I highly, highly recommend that you watch it right after this video. It's about the power of vulnerability. Little did I know, I was scared of being vulnerable. I don't know if it was the anxiety of trying to fit in or all the advice to keep work, faith and personal life separate. Either way, I know I am a much happier and healthier version of myself after watching this video. Embracing the real me wasn't easy, but once I learned how, my world was changed. My life became so much easier and, and lighter. I went through some really dark times in my life of hating myself. So hear me when I say I understand because I've been there and it's the most sinking feeling. But know that you will get through it. I'm here for you. I hope this video helped you in some way. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.